Hello, everybody. Hey, Bella. Oh, look at that puppy. Yay! So that was our introduction by Emoji J um, with our friend Gotti, who will be on the show tonight, which is super excited. Um, I'm super, super excited to have everybody here tonight. Welcome in. This is October the 24th. Remember, next week we will not be having Meow and Me because to next week is Halloween. And uh, I am super excited because it is Halloween and we'll have a lot of, um, I will have a lot of trick-or-treaters at my house. More than likely, lots of them. So I'm excited for that. Um, welcome in everybody who's coming in. We're just getting started with the show tonight. Welcome in. Um, the way I like to get things started, everybody, thank you for coming in. Let's. There's another featured show host. I like to point out featured show hosts when they're in the room. Please put some Silly Lily emojis in the comments. I just saw Silly Lily come in. Please make sure you favorite silly lily she also has a featured show on the app friday mornings um at uh, 11 a.m <laughs> 10 a.m 10 a.m eastern standard time okay so you see her there her name is silly toot sniffer so she's um okay that's very interesting um but we also have charm charlie make sure you hit up these incredible featured show um content creators they are here and they are um on the apps at their own time so um hit them with babes go check out their featured shows as well this featured show called meow and me means make each one wanted that's right that's what my meow means it means means each one wanted and let me tell you we have had all kinds all kinds of special pets on the show. Last week we had a whole reptile room. It was incredible. Thank you so much, so much, sweet. It was so incredible to see all of those snakes. This week we have our special guest, Gotti, and she's gonna be bringing us as her special pet to her dog. Now for all of you wondering, does Kitty own a kitty? I sure do. I own two kitties. This here is Chuck Norris. He is my seven-year-old rescue cat, and he is always close by. He tries to knock over the streamer, streamer stand all the time, um, okay? In fact, he just took me off my um, webpage that I had for, um, for trivia. Go figure. Chucky's always helping. He's a big helper. That's my baby. That's my baby. He's a big helper. So if you're just coming in, I just want to welcome you in. Let's get started with a little trivia. Maybe someday. Hello. Um, thank you all. Now, now I want to go over a few things. Um, housekeeping things, right? Thank you. Maybe someday. Thank you, Tani. Thank you, Roman. Um, in the in this featured show time. If you write anything inappropriate in the comments, you will be removed from this stream, okay? If you can troll anytime you want um, otherwise, but you're not trolling while we're streaming. One of my awesome and lovely bouncers will remove you if you troll while we are having our featured show tonight, okay? Um, and that's what they're here to do. They're going to protect um, our special guests um, and their pets, and they're going to keep the focus on our special guests. Um, we won't do any cussing, swearing. We won't um, be telling any dirty jokes. We won't have anything um, too, too much um, 
at all during this time period. So that's something you keep in matter keep in mind as well. This is a pet show. We will be talking about pets. Okay. <laughs> if you want to talk about something else, this is not the show for you. Okay. We love putting the animals and the emojis in the comments. Let's go, Jesus. Okay, so here we go. Um, but with all of that being said, I am going to periodically and, um, acknowledge the gifters. If I don't can't acknowledge them when they shoot the gift, I will acknowledge them periodically throughout the show tonight and say thank you, um, and I appreciate you. Thank you, Silly Lily. All right, here we go. We're going to do a little thing I like to do called dog trivia. Let me see how well you know your doggas. We've got a lot of dog owners in here, right? So let's find out how many, what do you think the answer is? How many dog breeds are there worldwide? Is it 400? Is it 800? Is it 200? Or is it 1,600? Who thinks, who thinks 200? That is not correct. 800? Oh, no, no. Who wants to go big? Who's going big? Tawny, it wasn't 1,600. Who was? Kitten, the irony. Kitten got the number of dog breed worldwide. It's the irony for me. All right, Kitten, let's go. All right, according to the World Canine Organization, <laughs> there are approximately 400 recognized, breed, recognized breeds of dogs worldwide. There is some contention, however, as to expect number of dog breeds as various kennel clubs recognize different breeds. So that's always exciting. Welcome in, everybody. All right, what dog is known for their bluish black tongue? What dog is known for their bluish black tongue? Is it a chow chow? Is it a lopso opso? Is it an Afghan hound or an American bulldog? Oh, we have like, I don't even know. I guess it's the chow chow for me. You guys know it. It's a chow chow. Okay, one of the oldest breeds of dogs. Yes, the chow chow is. Thank you. Thank you for the wheel. Wheel. Thank you, Kali. Okay, one of the oldest breeds of dogs. Chow chows are known for their bluish black tongues and gums. Yeah, they aren't born with this color, though. At birth, the chow chow's tongue and gums will be pink. By eight weeks old, that's when they start turning into this bluish black color that we know of for chow chows having a bluish blackish tongue. So, um, and guess what? This is so cute. But literally translated, chow chow means puffy lion dog. This is why Kitty had a chow chow in the past, because it was like a lion. Okay, what is the largest breed of dog? Is it a St. Bernard? Is it a Great Dane? Is it an Irish Wolfhound? Or is it an English Mastiff? Oh, somebody's coming in with Mastiff. That is not correct. The Great Dane? That is not correct. The Wolfhound? Chief Thor says Wolfhound, and you are correct, Chief Thor, standing at an average height of approximately 34 inches. The Irish Wolfhound is generally considered the world's largest, tallest dog. According to legend, Irish Wolfhounds were guardians and companions of ancient Irish kings and were valued by Celtic chieftains as dogs of war. Oh, yeah, that's crazy. According to some sources, they were originally bred to hunt wolves. In spite of their impressive height, the average weight of an Irish wolfhound is only 120 pounds. The English Mastiff is generally considered the world's heaviest dog. The world's heaviest dog. In fact, in 1999, the English Mastiff named Kel weighed at a weighed in at a whopping 286 pounds yeah according to kel's owner her food bill was like 200 pounds per week with inflation right now i'm guessing that's probably like 400 pounds a week no cap okay that dog ate some food and good thing they didn't eat kitty cats okay that's all i can say um all right here we go what breed of dog was originated in the late 1800s by Captain Max von Steffenwitz? 
who hoped to develop an all-purpose working dog. Was it a St. Bernard, a German Spitz? Was it a German Shepherd or a Border Collie? Which one do you think it was? The German Shepherd? Oh, somebody got that right, right off the bat. The German Shepherd, you got it. Yes, it, it was a... The German Shepherd did originate in Germany, and it, yeah, and all of that, it was for an all-purpose working dog. You got it. Dang. Okay, what is the fastest breed of dog? What is the fastest? A German Spitz, a Greyhound, a Harrier, or a Swedish Valhund? The Valhund, anybody? No, we go Greyhound. Greyhound, we're going Greyhound. Yes, we are. We're all Greyhound. We're all in on the Greyhound, folks. Reaching speeds of 45 miles per hour. The Greyhound is the fastest breed of dog. In fact, the only land animal faster than a Greyhound is the cheetah. Not surprisingly, though, breed Greyhounds are bred primarily for dog racing. They're, surprise, surprise. Okay, now this is going, we're going deep. We're going deep to see who knows. Can you go deep with me? We're going deep in. We're going all the way in. What is the most popular dog in the United States? Is it the Beagle? Is it the German Shepherd? Is it the Poodle? Or is it the Labrador Retriever? Everybody is saying Lab, 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 Lab. T is for two, it says Lab. We see nothing but Labs. And I cannot disagree. You guys know your doggas. You know them. According to the American Kennel Club, yeah, that's the most popular dog in the United States. And it's been the most popular dog for years and years consecutively. All right. Let's see what you know about this, though. What do you know about this one, though? Okay. What do you know about this, Chief Thor? What do you know? All right. What breed of dog was originated in Germany by a tax collector who needed a guard dog for protection? Was it a Great Dane? Was it a Pitbull? Was it a Doberman or a Rottweiler? I don't, Rottweiler? Rod, it was, everybody say I've seen Doberman? It was a Doberman. Oh my goodness. You guys are so good. Okay. The Doberman was originated in, in Germany around 1890 by a guy named Louis Doberman. Yes, guess what? He was a tax collector. <laughs> he was a tax collector who needed a dog to be to, for protection while he went around doing his job of collecting taxes. It's true. Hoping to develop a breed of dog with maximum strength, loyalty, and intelligence and fierceness. So there you go. That's what's up. The Doberman did it. Thank you. Ask Ashley. All right. But here you go. Let's see. What do you know about this? We're almost done playing trivia for pet trivia tonight. Thank you, Ashley. So all dogs are generally be believed. Okay, wait, wait, we won't do that one. That's a dinosaur question, and I don't know how to answer all of those dinosaur questions. Um, actually, I don't know how to say their names. <laughs> I'm going to have to pass. Pass. Those are things like walrus. I only know things like that, Shed, okay? I'm not good with things like blah, 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 blah. It's too long. I don't know what they have. Okay. What TV series? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay. What TV series had a dog named K9 who was also a robot? Was it Star Trek? Was it Doctor Who? Was it Battlestar Galactica? Battlestar Galactica? <laughs> That's a tongue twister. Or Wonder Woman? What say you? Doctor Who? Oh, you nerds. I love you nerds. Come on, you belong here. 
K9 is the name of us. <laughs> the name of the several robotic dogs in the long-running British science fiction television series Doctor Who. Although not originally intended to be a reoccurring character, K9 was kept in the show following his first appearance because he was popular with younger audiences. K9 has also been the central character in three of the television series spin-offs. Spin All right, this is the last question of the night. Who will get it first? I don't know. Who will get this first? This is gonna be, this is gonna be a this is gonna be a real nail biter. Somebody pay attention. How many eyelids does a dog have? One, three, zero, or seven? One three, one three, oh, one three zero seven. Somebody said zero. Not correct. Somebody said three. Who said three first? You are the winner. Dogs have three eyelids, an upper lid, a lower lid, and a third lid called a nictate, a nictitating membrane or ha, ha, <laughs> which keeps the eye moist and protected. It's three for me, okay? It keeps them protected and moist. Okay. All right. We got our first special guest here tonight. Please, please, please hit the box. Let me know you're ready. We'll get, get, get you going here with our first special guest, Gotti, tonight. Where, oh, where is Gotti? Fred, thank you. Let me do some shout outs while we wait for Gotti to hit the box. Let me shout out uh, Sweet. Let me shout out uh, Ask Ashley. And uh, and let's not forget Collie Cole. <laughs> Why can I not say things tonight? Okay, my mouth, it's stuck. My mouth is, it, it's stuck. Ooh. Hi, Gotti. Hello, how are you? I'm doing great. Okay, should I put it in the medium box? Uh, or can we all see the, uh, can we all see our special guest and the puppy? Well, we want to see her there. Oh, perfect. Oh, that's so perfect, Gotti. And if you look, and one of my favorite things about his markings is I feel like he looks like he has a little mermaid tail right here. So if I get him to look up, you can kind of see. It's just my favorite. Let me see. I'm going to just get rid of the comments for a second. Let me show me again. It goes down and then it's got the little mermaid tail at the end. That's rich. Oh my god, it does look like a mermaid tail. Good boy, good boy. Do you guys see the mermaid tail? Wow. Thank you guys. All right, Gotti. I want to know who are we looking at? What is what? Who is this that you have here by you? So this is Hooch. He is a Cane Corso, which is an Italian Mastiff. Um, he is a purebred, but he is a rescue. He has a pretty interesting backstory. Yeah, he's my favorite Lucky, but I feel super biased because he's mine. So like, but I just love him. Like, he's so chill. Um, anyway, sorry, I'll fan, I'll fangirl over my dog all day. Uh, he was found alongside of a road, um, in a nearby town and he's chipped and neutered and he is like the most well-behaved dog I think I've ever had. Um, and, and, like, and I've trained dogs to like, um, save people from like drowning. Um, so this dog is just unbelievably intelligent, um, super well behaved. He came to me when he was about three and I've had him just over two and a half years now. Um, but yeah, he was found alongside the road. This lady found him, uh, went knocking around like the area that he was found in looking for his owner. Nobody claimed him. I uh, took him to the vet, found out he was chipped, um, looked at the list. There were 12 people on his chip, uh, or 12 uh, different entries, I guess I should say, because it wasn't just people. There were rescues, um, three or four rescues, including a cat rescue, which I just think is funny because like 
if you look at like the size of his head to mine, like this dog is um, 30 pounds, 30 pounds less than me. Like he's a big boy. Um, so uh, we, we were concerned um, just what his history might be. Um, yes, Queen Savage, to be exact, the last time Smoochie was weighed, he was 131 pounds. So he is a big, big boy. He's thick, thick. He, yeah. Um, he's a has, thick old boy. Um, he's, yes, he is. Like, I feel like comparably head-wise, like, he's just a big guy. He's a big boy. Oh, he's so okay. And he's a what kind of mastiff? Gaudy? It's it's called a cane corso. Um, a lot of people know it as a cane corso because it's spelled C A N E, but because it is an Italian mastiff and the name has a Latin derivative, it's actually pronounced cane corso or um, in plural cane corso e with an I at the end instead of the corsos. Ooh. See, isn't this good? I have treats on the other side of me. Like, I don't know how we got so smart here, but I feel like low key the stream prior to this helped me figure out this trick, so. <laughs> He's so sure right now. He's waiting. He's excited. I love, okay, so I love, look at him. He weighs 131 pounds. His name is Smooches. Hooch. And uh, Hooch, like Turner and Hooch, but I oh. have like a million nicknames for him. His and name is <laughs> His name is Hooch, not Smooch. Yeah, like Turner. I, mean, I, I thought it was Smooches. I was so excited. Did oh. you name him that? Did you name him Hooch? Or yeah. was that something off of the registry? Like, and did you have to call all of these people on this registry before you could claim ownership? I'm just wondering, like, what, what was so, that process look like for you? So because this all got started prior to me, the, the dog was traced back all the way to his breeder. Oh. And Nobody claimed him. Aww. So he was at a house with the lady that found him. She already had three dogs, couldn't keep him. He's a big boy. Um, I'd say 255 pound bags of dog food a month at minimum. Um, so Plant Babe, who streams on here um, is a real life friend of mine and has his sister <gasps> and was the one that found this post and I wanted I wanted a Kane Corso so bad because I have always loved this breed so look at him with his little cross leg. So I know he he looks like he's completely, you know, he's sitting so pretty and like almost like he's ready for his photo shoot. It's adorable. We talked about this too. I told him that Kitty Commander was gonna make him famous, so he needed to act right. Like we had an, an entire conversation. <laughs> so he knows, huh? You want that sausage and pepperoni? Look at him look at you. You can totally tell he's like looking like, uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> um, um, you said who, who, who on here, you said a streamer on here has his sister? Yeah. What, uh, what's her name? Her name is Plant Babe, P-L-A-N-T-B-A-B-E, Plant Babe. That's crazy. Yeah, so um, I got the message and then um i messaged my partner and i was and i just sent a picture and then please question mark and in a moment of weakness i was told yes and i acted upon that opportunity the dog was at my home before my partner was so we got to keep Uchi smoochie and um 
on his registry. So because they had already, the vet had already gone through that chip process, um, I entered my stuff into his chip. So he is now legally mine. His name prior to me um, starts with a C and rhymes with dance. But we don't say that name in this house because he doesn't, he's not a fan of it, to be honest with you. Oh. I mean, Hooch sounds so much more fun anyways. Isn't it? Like, he's- Look at him look at you. He, like, looked at you like, did she say my name? Um, so this is, what you're seeing right now is really a trademark of the breed. Um, like, they are they are like what you imagine i don't know, like vin diesel to walk around like like just like this like low-key laid back like yes i can bench press you but like i'm not gonna show off about that you can clearly see this right so he was um uh the lineage for these guys go back to like the roman empire um where they were uh it's like what's it? It's like pyre for fire, p i r e, and then fury, pyre fury. I think it was called, where they had flaming, uh, like buckets or or whatever of oil strapped to them, and they would charge enemy lines during the Roman Empire. But when that Western civilization or that Western um, Empire like started its crumble there was not really a need to charge enemy lines because so the Kane Corso breed um, kind of became adaptable and turned into like a boar hunting dog and um, like a farm dog. Um, most, I would say probably most famously, they're, they're really known for guarding like chicken coops or homestead type situations. Um, and anybody that knows me knows that I live in the middle of nowhere. I have a little garden. Um, I have intentions of getting chickens, but no later than this spring. Um, so he's just, he's, he's like a little um, calm, cool, collected, uh, very loyal to, to his people. Like he is a guard dog of people and property. So wow. um, he it, he will not he will not necessarily charge a human but he will not let you enter this house unless he knows that it's okay for him to for you to enter this house he will stand Ooh. at the top of the stoop and yeah you know. like he's a good size i mean welcome in everybody if you're just coming into meow and me um this is our special guest Gotti, and her english or not english mastiff her italian mastiff Hooch, which is also a smooch, yes. which we've heard him called smoochies, and I like that more. So, <laughs> what do you like? <laughs> I, just, I just, I feel like everybody, like, it's like, okay, like, guys in the comments, please, please interact on this. Like, please type your dog's name and then tell us what you call your dog because these. I guarantee, you, I guarantee you. I guarantee you. There are so many people that have like nicknames or or whatever. Hooch Marino. <laughs> they're coming. They're coming. <laughs> but um, yeah, it's just hoochie smoochy. But um, they're, yeah, they're just really laid back, but like very sure of themselves. They're very aware. Like they um, will likely know what's going on and let you know what's going on. Um, but he just loves like laying in the sun and just kind of watching, um, like when I'm doing yard work and stuff, he's just chilling, he loves it, but he knows he does like a, a perimeter check of where I'm at and then just kind of goes off and lays and just looks around. So he's just a cool guy. He's a pretty cool guy. High five. Aww. You know, he's just like, when am I going to get that sausage? I'm being such a good baby. Look at him his ears. Oh, oh. He's like, yeah. That's what's up. <laughs> <laughs> he's so cute. I love his little ears. 
they look so now question like this is a large dog breed like how many people are get worried you know when they see the dog breed do they do are they scared because he is so large um i don't know if it so um i don't know if it's necessarily his size um which like this this um I, like i before i say it like i want you to know that this is like a double-edged sword for me because it makes me angry twice not just once right like mm -hmm. like we shouldn't judge animals just like we shouldn't judge people right like we gotta kind of give everybody a chance but we'd be careful about it you know like it just it's kind of common sense but people are like oh get away from that pit bull I'm like, first of all, it's not a pit bull. And second of all, why are you judging pit bulls? Like, so like I did, so I did, I, I, I like I, I get defensive twice because this is my kid, you know, like we're both broad children, but like we have feelings. So, yeah. <laughs> um, but it, it really though, people see him and like, like, like you've seen him just hang out with me. Like I can just like flap him down. Like like he just doesn't care. He's just a big oaf. He's beautiful and just like this is this is what he does, you know. Yeah, he's so pretty. I mean, he's the lover. Somebody Uber Yusuf, please, please stop requesting the box and don't call me BB. <laughs> like. Yeah, it's kidding. None of that, unless the doggy wants to call me BB. Mm -hmm. I mean, I love it. So how, so, okay, let me go back just a little bit, Gotti. So you, I just want to snuggle up with your doga. Um, okay, but you've had him now for three? Uh, about two and a half. Two and a half years. Okay. And now, because he is a big dog, does he require a certain amount of exercise? Like, what are, what, I don't know much about larger dogs. Um, like, do they require that they get walked every day? Like, what kind of feeding requirements do dogs this size have? Um, you know, what, what, if somebody's in here, like, going, man, that dog is so everything. I wish I could have a dog like that. I just want to give them a, also a realistic picture of, like, what kind of care would go into having a dog like Hooch as well. Absolutely. Um, so for him, he is, uh, according to, like, American Kennel Club, um, AKC, uh, they are three out of five for being good with kids, three out of five for being good with other animals. So it's kind of like a, mm, um, if we're being, if, if, if you want a very honest, raw answer, this dog is not a dog for your first dog. I have had, I, I had six to seven dogs in my house at any given time growing up. I've been around dogs my entire life. I've taken like animal behavior and animal training like things or what, I'm not saying that that makes me a professional. I'm not by any means, but like I have a very good understanding. I've been around dogs. I'm very familiar with dogs. Um, and I also respect dogs because like I have scars from them too. You know, um, this dog is not a dog for you to get because you think he's cute. This is a dog that if you were to buy him as a puppy, costs you thousands right off the bat if you want to treat him right. Um, the dog food that he gets because he has allergies, <laughs> um, he, uh, it's $56 every two weeks for just the dry dog food, um, four cups, like just a, like I try to like not make them even, but like a little bit more extra, please, money too soon, you know, but four cups of that, um, every two, two cups in the morning, two cups at night in terms of feeding. So it's a financial commitment every month. Like you're, you're paying well over a hundred dollars just to feed one dog. Um, wow. In terms of this dog, 
um, I would probably trust him with my life over a lot of humans because he, this this is what you get when you when you take the time somebody who and and i can't even take the credit for him um i mean i can now but only to a point right uh, when he came to me so this dog plays dead like i can go bang and he will play dead on the floor until i say good boy and put the gun down and then he will get up and take his street and i can demonstrate that that's why there's another one too right here um but he came to me like that he came to me completely house trained he came to me with the ability to sit stay lay down speak shake play dead um and and i found this out by by messing around with him like I didn't, I knew nothing about this dog when he showed up at my house besides he needed a home. Um, so when you when you get a dog like this, uh, for those of you that are considering it, that, that do have the experience and the financial means to do so, um, it is important to socialize them early and socialize them often. Uh, and, and when you when you go to socialize animals, when they when they are showing a bad behavior, it's important to remember that that negative correction in that moment is not always the best because that might create a negative association with another dog or with dogs in general if that's something that they get used to. So it's it's very you have to be very mindful about your approach with that socialization, um, and and with humans as well because they, um, and, and this is their strength and their downfall. This dog will protect what he loves and what he is, what he knows is his to protect without a second thought. This mm. is the dog that I have so that I know that if anything were to happen, if somebody were to try to intrude in my house, one, they'd probably see him and turn around. And two, if they didn't, like between him and me, no matter how big this guy was, like we might have a chance. You know. What well, I mean? you did say that your dog, like his celebrity person, is Vin Diesel. So, I mean, there we know. Right, like, <laughs> we know though, that where's the Diesel, camera because I want to record. Like he's <laughs> that's his spirit. His spirit celebrity is Vin Diesel. So and I feel like you know, like I feel like it's like like low-key like one of those moments where like you just like walk into a dark room and there's just like this shadow of light almost just like illuminating like his beautiful almond eyes and then like his face emerges from the shadows and like, this <laughs> just, like all right let me ask you what is okay so hooch does he go for walks like what's his favorite thing to do with you you know, dogs generally like walking, but maybe Hooch likes doing other things besides walking. I don't know. Um, so we have lots of trees in our, on our property, and I go around and collect them and put them in the fire pit for, you know, when we have bonfires and stuff. And then he likes to get them back out and decorate the yard. He really enjoys <laughs> And by stick, I mean um, like an entire tree. If he can get it and move it, he will. Um, he likes the ones that I grab because he sees that they're not connected. So it's like an easy target for him. Um, he he follows me around on the lawnmower until he gets tired and then he'll go lay under a tree. Um, he really, his favorite thing um, are, are truck, um, R-I-D-E-S. Uh, he he gets so excited. He knows. Ooh. He's like, "What'd you say?" Um, well, can you show me? Like, can you put your hand against Hooch's paw it's just to get an idea of like Hooch's paw to your hand? So, and just to give you an idea, I have piano hands, and like I used to grip like a men's basketball. So, like I I have large hands. Okay, but like regardless, like. Wow. He's got, he's got big paws. Um, like, you know, the normal. He would hold your hand for sure. 
Those normal do dog nail clippers don't fit his 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 nails. Oh, let me see his nails. Oh yeah, they are big. Oh, they're wide. Yeah, I don't. That would be. A, I mean, you'd almost have to take him to the breeder to get that the trim down and stuff for sure. Oh man, shoot. So does Hooch have any other household pet friends or is it just Hooch there with you? Um, it's just Hooch at the moment, so. Okay. And then has he been around other pets? You said that one of his tags was um, in the past on his chip. Was he another like cat? Yeah, he, um, so my, so when I told my dad his story, he kind of joked that, like, he was in the FBI and he was, like, undercover. <laughs> uh, because his story is just so weird. So he was at three different rescues um, in two different cities. And one of the rescues was, was, like, named blank and blank cat rescue. Like, it was, it was a cat rescue in this behemoth of a dog was at a cat rescue and um so i had two G two female german shepherds when he came to me um and he was he was fine with it like he like they were more um excitable energetic um he just he really like this is what he does a lot he just kind of chills I love how snuggly he is. I really makes me. Do you guys love how snuggly that hooch is? I cannot, you know. I mean, let me ask you a little few more questions about like, like because he is such a big dog, you know. And you kind of said before, sometimes these bigger dogs get kind of a bad rap, right? Um, do you think he can tell when you're sad, Gotti, and or maybe he can tell when you're in a bad mood? Like, what are some of the things that, you know, you think in terms of his emotional abilities to, like, kind of sense where you're at? What does that look like for you and him together? Oh, man. Um, <laughs> this dog is my rock. <laughs> uh He's always here, um, and he's 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 versatile because he's here when I when I need a snuggle buddy. He's here when I need an ear, um, and I mean the best part about dogs is the way they love. Like I wish I wish people could love the way dogs love. You know, um, he knows when I'm sad. He knows when I'm excited. He he knows when I need to be in the moment and tries to, you know, jump and, and play with me because like, and, and he plays like very gentle, like he doesn't jump up or anything, but like we kind of have a, a little thing where like, we'll like jump and play and um, he'll like come at me and then like, uh, he'll go like right underneath my legs, but I have to stay up on my tiptoes so he can actually go. And then he'll go up, turn around and like come at me and do it again. So it's kind of like almost like, I don't know, I, I almost feel like one of those uh, bullflagger guys, you know. Um, but he, he's just gentle and we just play around and I don't know, he's like, he's literally man's best friend. Like I just, I do yard work with him. I I'm trying to teach him to stay in the side by side so he can go on rides with me. Uh, 99.9% .9 of the time, the back seat in my uh, in my in my truck is up so that he can jump in the back, and he just sits on the floor and he's still eye level with me sitting in the front seat. Um, so he just he chills with me. He loves he'll lay down in the truck or hang out, um, watch. Just he's my right hand man wherever I go. Like I love him. Back. Yeah. So question. If Hooch was going to give you a nickname, right? What do you think Hooch would nickname you? Thank you, Cece. I don't know. He's very food motivated, so probably like 
call you sausage? Like, <laughs> yeah, I mean, like the hand that feeds me, maybe. <laughs> no, the hand that feeds me. <laughs> I don't know. Chef Dottie. <laughs> right. I can see the like, consent yeah, your stand. Oh my gosh, you guys. <laughs> That's actually a pretty good one, Bella. I like it. I, was, I think that might have been the yeah, yeah that might have been the best one. Got any food? <laughs> yeah, like like a uh, dog bag, dog tree. Yeah, we're just here. Okay, if you're just coming, this is a good chance to if you're just coming into meow and me, meow means make each one wanted. We're a weekly featured show about pets. All pets are welcomed here. Um, this week we have an Italian mastiff and his um, owner, Gotti, who also streams on the app. Um, and you're in the right spot, believe it or not, Gotti. We can actually see you where you're at. So oh, yeah. you're actually in the right spot. And we oh. can see, and we can actually see him too perfectly as well because he's where he's right underneath me. So that works out really well where you guys are at. So um, this is her dog, Hooch. Um, this is a rescue, her rescue dog. Um, he he is a big dog. He's about 131 pounds, you guys. Um, he was clearly shuttled around quite a bit um, when he was a bit younger as a as a puppy, um, and he's I think kind of found his forever home here with Gotti now, and has been uh, in her care for about two and a half years. Um, and so Hooch is a pretty chill dog, um, you know, and so we are just kind of going over what Hooch would call his owner if he could give her a nickname. And we've all decided it will be concession stand. So, <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, does he, does he do any barking on command or anything like that, Gotti? Or, I mean, how loud is Hooch? Um... I mean, I don't know how loud he can, can get, but... I would go with so quick. Speak. Mm -mm. Speak. Mm -hmm. Loud. Speak. <coughs> loud. Get it. Who's here? Oh. Who is it? <laughs> Watch him. Get him. <coughs> Who is it? Where are they at? Find them. Go. <laughs> Good boy. You scared him. Right? I think he found somebody. Good He's boy. like, I don't know. Nobody's there, but I'm a good dog. <laughs> I don't know who was there, but I'm a good dog, and I did it. I did what you told me to do. Oh, come here, up here. All right, sit there. That's fine. I love it. I love it. I love it. Um, let's see. Do you think that if Hooch could trade places with one person, who do you think you would trade places with for the day? Um. Oh, Smooch. Uh, probably. <laughs> Probably somebody at like a Chinese buffet. <laughs> he wants, does he like Chinese food? I mean, I don't know if he likes Chinese food. I just feel like a buffet style would be like totally his game. <laughs> Thank you. Oh. oh. Sorry. <laughs> It's, I like that he's looking at you and he's and he, you're looking at him and he's like, well, I'm gonna think about it over here. I'm gonna I'm gonna just chillax right here. This is all this is all food motivation. Like this is. Ah, uh, <laughs> that's smart. Yeah. That's smart, actually. Um, do you want any more baby pets in the future? Um. In the future, I mean, I I want chickens, so I plan on getting chickens in the spring, um, at the latest. Oh, uh, 
but in terms of dogs, like the only reason I feel like I'd get another dog before he goes is because I, I, w I don't know how I'll be when he goes. You know what I mean? Yeah, I, I think it would be like just another pet friend. I mean, if Hooch and you were on a desert island, what are the three things that Hooch would require that you bring that he would not want you to forget? Um, a very large bone. A bone. <laughs> um, I do like to do, so, you know, like those Kong, like honeycomb looking toys that have the holes through the center of them? Oh, yeah. I put peanut butter in those and then freeze them so that it like keeps them entertained. Um, so probably that and more food. <laughs> He's yeah. He's like, like, food. Don't forget this. This baby likes to well, eat. No, actually, no. I take that back. Um, one of the things would definitely be like a very comfortable place to sleep. Like he really enjoys. Um, like the couch or his like he has like a medical mattress like a whole single medical mattress bed for himself in his living room um but like if 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 hypothetically that mattress weren't there and all of the comfortable places for him to lay were taken he would get mouthy about it he would let you know that there's nowhere for him to sit and that like he obviously doesn't want to lay on the ground so <laughs> he's a little, he's a little pillow. I love, it. I love it. I love it. I love everything about Hooch. He's got all the big fans. He's going to have all the big fans. Um, okay. So if, okay, if you're just coming in, we're just kind of going to wrap up a little bit with our special guest, Scotty and her special dog, Hooch. Now, Gotti, before you go, I want to know, Oh, I just want to smush him. Um, <laughs> I just want to smush him. Um, if you had, you know, if you had to give away your dog, would you give away your dog for $1 million? You, you, couldn't, you couldn't give me everything I've ever dreamed for to get rid of this dog. I'm sorry. <laughs> You're like, no, not even for $1 million? No, that's love. Million dollars, like no. There are things that money can't buy, and like the the things that him and I have experienced together in this time in my life, like no. Understandable. That's a hundred percent. Yes, I I'm here for that. I am definitely here for that. Um, I I love it. Now, he's before been, you, sorry, he's been, but he, for real, like you know, he's been passed around enough. Like I'm not. Yeah. He's an awesome dog, and he he shouldn't ever feel rejected ever again in his whole life. So like, I'm not gonna let him feel that way. He will be. I totally be agree. Like that's it. Huh. Yeah. Yeah. Well, okay, so with our last few minutes together, Gaudia, like, we're going to move it off of Hooch, and we're going to move it on to you for just, we're going to be like, what does Gaudi do, like, on the app? Who does Gaudi talk to? What does Gaudi do on this app? How do we, how do we get to, to, to in touch with Gaudi? Does Gaudi do any special programming? Um, can you tell us about, a little bit about you? Where can we find Hooch? Um, well, Hooch hangs out with me a lot, so um, I I stream Monday through Friday from 7 a.m. to 8 a.m. I'm part of a triple threat show with Shed Goddess, who was on Kitty Show a couple, three, okay. a couple weeks ago, a couple weeks, somewhere in there. Um, and then Shed Goddess is from 6 to 7, right before me, and then Silly Lily is on from 8 to 9, right after me. Um, we call it the Triple Threat Morning Show, so um, make sure you tune And that's all Eastern time. Eastern, okay. It starts at what time? 6 a.m. to 7 with Shen. Seven okay. 
to eight with me and then eight to nine ish with Lily. And then um, Friday is the femme fatale final um, because Silly Lily also has that featured show at 10 afterwards. So it all kind of flows together and um, we all just kind of wake up with each other. Shed kind of does a coffee slash tea. Good morning, get ready for your day. And then I'm playing tunes. Um, I play the guitar uh, and sing. And um, I, I do a lot of mid-song tangents. I feel like that's my <laughs> like, I'll just, I'll in there. I, like I'll see something in the comments or have a random thought. Because somebody pops in, I'll be like, hey, by the way. And then like it'll take me a minute to like get back and, and you know, sync with <laughs> hearing stuff and making sure that I don't know. I, it sounds all right before I get going again, but I don't know. Usually we get around to finishing a song or two uh, by the end of the stream. Somewhere. Okay. And then do you have any kind of social media to Gotti or um, do you have any kind of way that people can connect with you outside of the meet me? Like do you do Snapchat, TikToks, like any of this stuff? Uh, so I have Instagram, and it is connected to my profile, so if you, I'm going to try and do this right, click right here, and then go into my, yeah, see, I forget sometimes that it's weird, um, but if you click on that, uh, and you look at the little picture guy, you can go to right to my Instagram and follow me, yes, <laughs> is it there, am I pointing in the right way, or is it this way? Yeah, for me, it's that way. That's why it is. Like, <laughs> she said, if you click on this right here and fit her with a fave, you can go find out more about her on her um, social media that's connected to her profile. Right there. <laughs> right there. <laughs> well, I found out that I can but, change that. I found that out. I was today years old when I found that out. Just so you know. That today, I can, you're yeah. in the right spot. Because otherwise I would have told you to move over. And then like, you know, you're doing good. Yeah, oh, don't make me like, get my cool, finger like, My face is kind of hidden. I can just like let it be on hooch. So like I was just over here thinking I was all inconspicuous. Yeah, no, not at all. So. Uh-uh. Hooch was I'm underneath me. About. So that's good because we got to see everybody in the in the picture. So that's cool. Thank you so much for coming on, Gotti, tonight. I hope you guys learned a little bit more about Italian Mastiffs. Um, and hope you learned a little bit more about, um, as well, Gotti and her story with her special friend. Um, if you have a story, um, Gotti, I'm going to let you out of the box. Or actually, will you... I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to let you out at this point. And what I'm going to do is saying, if you guys have a special friend that you want to show off on Meow and Me, whether it's a reptile, a bearded dragon, a snake, a turtle, a llama, whatever your pet might be, if you're willing to share it with us, please hit up myself on Instagram or, um, on, or Emoji J on Instagram and let either one of us know that you have a special pet that you would like to be on the show. Now, before we all finish up tonight, there is one, one thing that I do kind of want to remind everybody about because at, this is like the pets in the news section. And you know, I have a big, big heart for all pets. So something that I want to remind everybody about is that Halloween is coming up. And yes, next week, Kitty Commander will be giving out Halloween candy at her house. And so I won't be having a show next week for on October the 31st. But that being said, I have cats. And so there's certain things that you don't want to leave around with your pets on Halloween. And I just wanted to go over some few tips to remind you because Halloween is right around the corner. And many of us put our pets in costumes for some fun trick or treating and or parading our, our pets around. And with so many pets out and about, it's important to keep your pet safe and on a leash if you're going to take it out trick-or-treating with you, okay? Even if it's a cat, it could benefit from being on a harness and a leash during this time. Hey, Quinn, we got another featured featured, um, featured show. Uh, <laughs> sorry, my brain. 
featured show um, content creator here, you guys. Please make sure you favorite the featured show content creators. We've had Charm Charlie, we have Quinn and JT, we have Silly Lily. Thank you so much for the gifts. I appreciate it so much. Thank you so much, Shed. Please make sure you favorite those guys, you guys, as you see them. They all have their own featured shows as well. And we appreciate when they come in and show love to us as at here in Meow and Me. Um, okay, you guys. So going back to the costuming of your pets. So please, if you're taking your pets out trick-or-treating, please put them on a leash. You know, they might get scared or spooked by somebody's costume. They might get scared or spooked because, you know, they hear a loud noise. Um, don't just assume that your dog can go out, with, out trick-or-treating without being on a leash. Also, remember, there are a lot of people out and about during trick-or-treating. Please make sure your dog or cat or whatever it might be is is in a safe space during that time so whether that's in a special spare bedroom because the doorbell's going off and on and off and on or whether you are able to put your dog in the leash in the backyard because of the doorbell going off and on just keep in mind that your pet is probably going to get a little stressed because there's going to be a lot more noise and there's a lot more people that they don't know and a lot more um, things that, like even just walking if you're taking them with you while you trick or treat. Also, so that's something, some things to think about. Um, the other things, keep your treats safely tucked away. For you, for those of you who have children that you're going to be taking out trick-or-treating, maybe one of you will bring your kids to my house and I can scare them. I don't know. But if Kitty can give you, if you come to my house trick-or-treating, please make sure you keep your pet safe too. Please don't give them chocolate. Please don't give them any of the, the candies that your kids are going to get for Halloween, okay? Keep those treats safely tucked away from your pets because your pets can't help it, especially doggas. They love to eat snacks, and they'll just sniff it, and sometimes they just eat it and don't realize that it's bad for them. So please, please, please make sure your kids take and don't give your dogs candies right at this holiday season okay so tuck away the candy to, away from the pets all right if they are ingested if they do ingest some chocolate um it is toxic so call your veterinarian right away if you need to um if you can stick to pet friendly costumes thank you carlos stick to pet friendly costumes that don't like have um, parts that can get hung up and choke your pet. Um, also remember, like after dark, you're best to keep your pets inside, um, especially during Halloween when people are running around screaming, yelling, and like trying to purposely scare people. It's not a good time to leave your dog in the front yard. Okay, so put your dog either in, in a way from the way from the traffic or in your house. Also, keep an eye on your pumpkins. Um, make sure they're away from your pets, especially if you're using candles inside them okay you might want to light up that jack-o-lantern i know i did i made a a cat jack-o-lantern i'm very proud of it i won the carving competition that og lucky threw here um a week ago or so here on the app you know just to give myself a little clout i won um but anyways um that's something i'm not gonna do is keep a lighted candle in it. Um, instead, I'm gonna use one of those um, electric battery operated candles for it. So that way there, there's no risk of, of fire or flame or honestly, sometimes pets go up to them and just tend to sniff them. Like, you know, like, ooh, what's this? And then they, like, since they have these cute little costumes on, they can catch on fire and it can turn into a big mess. So use caution with jack-o'-lanterns and pets costumes, okay?
and then that pretty much will like wrap up my my tricks or rather my treats for your pets um my last my last pets in the news like um those were like, your tips for um <laughs> ah thank you gotti <laughs> oh thank you <laughs> um the last thing of the night you guys um, yes, you can, DJ Robin. My last thing for the night is about a story that I heard of a pet club called the world's first dog-friendly cinema ser serving Scooby snacks, pets for o and owners. So it's a cinema in the UK, in Manchester, UK, and it is allowing pups to join their owners during the cinema. And they get doggy snacks while their owners eat popcorn and they can sit there together and have a great time having um, like a dual like night together in the cinema. I think it's adorable. It's called the world's first pet friendly cinema serving Scooby snacks for pets and owners. So, um, and it's called the Pet Club and it's in Manchester, uh, UK. So I think it's adorable. Like you can bring your pet to the movies that night and, you know, see a movie and yeah. And it's always some kind of pet themed movie that they show. So it's super cute. I think it's adorable. So um, I hope you guys enjoyed Meow and Me this week. This wraps up our show for this week. Remember next week we will not be having um a feature well i there might be featured show but um kitty will be giving out halloween candy to all of her neighborhood kid friends um <laughs> instead so i will not be having a show next week but the week after we will be having back to our regular programming okay um i hope you had a great time learning about Gotti and her italian mastiff and please make sure please make sure Yes, I am. Guess what I'm going to dress up as, Gotti? I'll give you one guess. It says meow. <laughs> like, it says meow. Yeah. No, it's not a doga. It's not a fish. It is not a turtle. <laughs> it is a meow. <laughs> it is a kitty. So I'm super excited. I'm very excited. Yeah, I'm like looking forward to sharing Halloween treats with my neighborhood and um, the people in my neighborhood who are daring enough to go trick or treating, trick or treating door to door. So let's hope that the weather is lovely, you know. So that's my whole goal is that you guys let me do some shout outs to um in the stream up tonight i want to shout out Gotti. thank you so much for being my guest and my top gifter of this stream simply sweet ask ashley silly lily dj roman Kali call bella fred s carlos quinn shed goddess final flash all of you thank you so much for the gifts i hope you had a great night and I will um, see you in two weeks' time for Meow and Me. But uh, for the others of you, I will see you later this week. Don't forget to check out those other featured show hosts that came in tonight. Um, Charm Charlie, Silly Lily, and Quinn and JT um, all have these amazing shows on the app. Don't forget to go check them out as well. You guys have a great night. Take care of yourselves and your pets. Bye, Meow.